We've got a slightly different camera angle for a slightly different deck because, frankly, this one wasn't doing it for me anymore. Welcome back everyone to more from the Sable Eyes. I'm Mitch and today we're going to talk about Altaria, a fantastic single prize Pokemon that has been taking standard by Storm recently with an ability that is very powerful. So powerful in fact that you might just get yourself some free wins on the PTCGO ladder, which is all that we can really ask for. Ultimately there are some decks that just can't deal with Altaria and that's because of its amazing ability. The ability Miraculous Charm means that there is no damage coming from your opponent's GX or V Pokemon. They cannot deal damage to it at all. That means that lots of decks don't actually have a really good way of dealing with it. Obviously, if you have a single prize attacker, things like Volcanion or uh, in other decks, maybe uh, an Aegis Slash V, which can obviously hit through effects on attacks, then sometimes Altaria can be knocked out. But other decks like Lucario Melmetal, Picaron, these kind of things don't necessarily have attackers that can deal with this Pokemon once it's in play. And with a 2 energy attack, speed dive for 60 damage that is consistently putting on pressure, we are very likely to be able to steal some wins on the ladder. Uh, let's talk about another Pokemon that's in this deck and one that we can finally knock off of the OG 150 challenge and that is Kangaskhan. We've got it in this deck because of the attack Rally Back. It does 30 damage for 2 colorless energy, which is the same cost as our Altaria, and it also deals 90 more damage if one of your Pokemon was knocked out by your opponent last turn. So if you do come across something that can knock out your Altaria, maybe a Volcanion, for example, has just knocked your Altaria out, you can attach a twin energy to your Kangaskhan and then rally back for 120 and knock it out in return. Lots of these decks that do have an answer to Altaria sometimes don't have ways to get these Pokemon back, and so if Kangaskhan can come in and take those knockouts, it can be very easy to put your opponent into a checkmate. One final Pokemon that I do want to talk about, and it is a one-of in the deck, but it's a very important one, it is Apom, which is a really weird promo that actually came out in the Pikachu and Zekrom League battle deck, if, if I'm not mistaken. I think I'm, I think I'm correct. It's an incredibly cool card with, with some great art. I mean, look at that. Look at that little smiling Apom. He's having a great time. Yank Out is the attack, which frankly could have had a nicer name, but it is the attack we are looking at. For one energy, we discard cards in our opponent's hand by random until they have five cards left. Now you might ask, why is that relevant? Well, sometimes decks like Lucario and Melmetal will just draw and pass and then eventually try and deck you out by using cards like Clefairy, uh, po Lily's Pokedol, Clefairy's Pokedol, Lily's Pokedol. We're so deep in this, I'm not cutting that out. <laughs> We've got Lily's Pokedol, so they'll try and extend their deck that way. If we use Apom's Yank Out, we can remove a ton of cards from their deck, and we will win via deck out as long as everything goes according to plan. So, ultimately, Altaria is a really powerful card. We're going to play a couple of games with it at the end of the video. Don't forget to check the rating, and if you haven't already, then make sure that you like this video so that more people can see it. Now, we've got ourselves a perfect start, and you might be asking, Mitch, what are you doing over in this corner? Normally, normally you're over there. Well, I've, I've purchased a green screen to go with my new camera, so I'm going to be in this corner now, because it looks nice. We're up against ADP here, uh, which is going to be very interesting. Again, it's one of those decks that we probably don't need to worry about, considering the fact that there is a pretty good chance our opponent doesn't have an attacker that can deal with our Altaria. So I've just attached, and then Snorlax will use Gormandize to draw some cards. Uh, they may potentially, potentially play a copy of the, uh, what do you call it, Aegis Slash V, which could be a bit of a pain. If they do, then that's awkward, but if they don't, I'm feeling pretty confident we can come away with the win here as long as we can get some Altarias in play throughout our game. So our opponent has attached an energy to the ADP and we are actually looking really, really strong here. Um, we've got the Altaria in our hand, we've got energy, we've got another Swablu as well, which is very good. Um, it looks like they might actually be playing that Swablu down for us thanks to Morwile's Wily Bite ability. Um, but I think we're looking pretty good here. 
Um, well, they actually elected not to put that swap blue down, and, and fair enough, it's probably not required for them to do so. We are good to go. Uh, we just double check, let's see, they've got, they've not really used anything. They've got a couple of hammers down already, so I'll attach the twin to the Altaria, then I'll play down the Swablu, and then I will Marnie, and uh, we're probably just going to be Gormandizing again this turn. So, that seems like a pretty reasonable play to me. We'll quick ball, we'll get rid of the Mew, we don't need that. And then we'll Gormandize. I think that's pretty much all we need to do. We probably could have played the other Swablu down, but ultimately it doesn't matter too much. And that Rose is really, really good as well. It means that we can potentially find an Altaria if they do take a knockout next turn, but they're not likely to do that. Um, so yeah, we're, we're looking pretty good here. Just just very quickly, this is weird for me. I'm just, I've just looked across at my OBS. I've looked across at my OBS and I'm in a different spot and I'm uncomfortable. My angles are all weird because normally if I was if I was doing a video that I'd done in the past, I'd be looking at this camera here. It's still there. The camera is still there, but you're over here now. So I need to get used to looking to the right instead of the left. Um, but that's okay. Leave a, leave a comment down below. What do you what do you think about the uh, the new upgrades? Do you like them? Do you think they're cool? Do you like the new intro uh, where I went through the deck? Obviously, the deck list is in the description. So if you want to check out the deck, you're more than welcome to. Uh, this one was based off of the. Uh, the Altaria list that Azul played in the uh, most recent big tournament that he played in. I can't remember exactly what the tournament was, um, but I made a couple of changes. Particularly, I added in a second Kangaskhan because I want to tick that off the OG150 challenge. And it is incredibly important in this matchup. So, uh, not in this matchup, in this deck, but... You know, we'll, we'll wait and see. If we can get some knockouts with it, that would be fantastic. Um, but we are we are obviously focused more on Altaria here, uh, and we've been given a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent hand. Like, there's not a huge amount that we really need to worry about. We can just bird keep it into Altaria here. Um, I will play down the Poker Doll, which seems pretty good, and then I can just speed dive. I think for 60 damage, there's. No real, uh, it's 80 damage because of the strong energy, obviously the powerful colourless energy on our Altaria. But yeah, I'm just kind of uh, in the way of if we've got big hands, but you can still you can still see that little Apom there. Hello little, hello little Apom. You can still see him. You, you know what's going on, you're not an idiot. I don't need to treat you like a fool. So yeah, uh, our opponent has benched themselves out here, so if they do have the Aegis Slash then they can't get it in play. Uh, which is really, really good for us. They have GX'd, and they will not be bossing this turn. So, as long as we can evolve our second Swablu into an Altaria before our opponent takes six prizes, we should be fine. They've already used their Mawile. They're obviously not going to be able to take any damage on the Altaria, which is incredible. I think we just attach... Oh, what are, we, what are we looking at here? One Crushing Hammer, two, three, four. All four Crushing Hammers are gone. That is fantastic news. So I'm going to I'm gonna attach to the Swablu, and then I think I might just Marnie, uh, because I am looking for that Altaria. If I can get the second Altaria, then I am in the clear. It uh, doesn't look like we've got it just yet, but we could get it later. Uh, plus, we'll just be able to speed dive this turn anyway. So let's just do that. Speed dive, 80 more damage, and we're looking incredibly good. Good. So yeah, very, very cool deck. I like it quite a lot. Uh, Miraculous Charm obviously has its drawbacks. There are Pokemon that can get around it. And if your opponent is prepared for this deck, then you are unlikely to win. But lots of, po uh, lots of people on the ladder just don't care about Altaria or Decidueye, which is another one of those decks where you can just earn yourself some free wins. That boss is very frustrating. Losing that Swablu is really, really quite annoying. Um, mainly because we now need to find a scoop up net. Uh, there's only two of them in the list. We need to find a scoop up net in order to remove either the Snorlax or the Kangaskhan from play. Uh, we'll promote the Snorlax here because we've got Bird Keeper. Um, and, uh, and we get the Altaria one turn late. Of course we do. Um, okay, let's level ball. Um, we're gonna grab a Swablu. Let's just double check. The two scoop up nets are in the deck, so we've got access to them. Um, and this ADP is actually on 120 HP, so I would be remiss if I didn't at least try and take a knockout with Kangaskhan when I can. Uh, so let's go for it here, I think. Um, we're gonna rally back. We're gonna take three prizes, and I just looked at my opponent's cards in deck. They've only got ten cards left, so... I mean, they better win this game pretty quickly. 
Obviously, that's the that's the idea for ADP, right? You need to push really, really hard. If you don't have the Aegis Slash, then you need to take prizes when they're there to be taken. And uh, at the moment, I'm leaving I'm leaving these prizes out to dry. I've got a Snorlax hanging out there. I've got a Kangaskhan in the active. Um, and I've actually given my opponent a knockout with Wily Bite here. If I had have removed the Lily's Pokedol from play, I would have kept that Kangaskhan alive. But I did not manage to do that, uh, which is a little bit disappointing. But that's okay. We can get rid of the Pokedol now, I suppose. Um, now we just desperately need to find the scoop up net. It, it is as simple as that. And to be honest, um, I'm not entirely sure what the best way to go about doing this is. I think we just Marnie and hope that we get it. I mean, that's about it, right? We don't. Okay, so we are looking at a potential win from our opponent because I've left it too late. Because I've been too busy talking to the camera to think about what's actually going on. We'll speed dive and deal 100 damage to that more while if our opponent happens in the 10 cards left in their deck to have an energy and a metal saucer and a boss, they will win the game. But I, I don't know. I don't know. I find it unlikely that that is... is, that is a, I find it unlikely. I'll stumble over my words there for a little bit. But yeah, I like the way that I like the way that this looks. I don't like the fact that I keep sticking my hand out. But that's okay. Uh, Intrepid Sword is not going to do the job. We have one more chance to find ourselves. I did have an energy though. Oh my goodness. Uh, we have one more chance to find that scoop up net. So let's go. We'll draw some more cards. Uh, we're going to grab the Bird Keeper back. I think that seems like a good idea. And there is a scoop up net. So we can scoop up the Snorlax. And now I think we are pretty safe in this matchup. We can just keep dealing 100 damage every turn until either our opponent decks out or we take our last three prizes for the game. We have Boss to knock out the Mawile, and there's the concession. So we do win this one. We'll see if we can't get one more. Kangaskhan took some prizes. Alrighty, now I was talking earlier about Lucario Melmetal being a really interesting matchup, and we've actually stumbled upon it here, which is very, very interesting. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to go. Um, I think if we can get a couple of Swablus set up, then we should be able to put ourselves in a position where we win this game. Because normally, Lucario Melmetal does not play any cards that can deal with cards like Altaria. Um, normally, like the best card for it would probably be Agislash, just like ADP. Except it can't deal with Decidueye as well, which is a bit of a problem. We've, we've got quite a lot going on here though, so I'm feeling relatively comfortable. We have a Swablu. Um, I can use Pokemon Communication to get rid of the Kangaskhan in our hand. We can grab a Snorlax here. Um, we can throw that into the field of play, then Bird Keeper into it, which is very, very strong. There's an Altaria for next turn, but no more playable cards, so no, no Gormandize for us, but that's okay. Um, now, this one's going to be pretty slow, and I, I feel like I'm going to get in the way of my uh, of my bench here. This Altaria is not going to be the last card that ends up underneath me, uh, but I feel like eventually this game, if I can get an Altaria into play, which it's looking like I may be able to do, although that money is quite frustrating. If I can get an Altaria into play, then this game becomes very different. Uh, it's going to come down to resource management, and potentially that APOM, which I like the idea of. So we will uh, we will continue along with what we've got going on. We'll see if, it, uh, see if it works out for us in the end. But at the moment, as long as we find an Altaria, we should be good to go. We can Cynthia and Caitlyn away the Snorlax, which is good, and then hopefully from there we can find uh, some other... Bits and bobs, an Altaria is the way to go. Uh, put a supporter into our hand. We're going to get rid of the Snorlax. We're going to grab the Bird Keeper. And then we are going to miss the Altaria, which is a bit frustrating. We'll attach an energy. I'm going to use Level Ball. We'll grab another Swablu. Because again, as long as our opponent doesn't take six prizes, we should be fine. We'll Gormandize. And hopefully we can find an Altaria here and we can't. Which is very, very frustrating. Uh, they'll be able to knock out the Snorlax this turn, and we might need to uh, 
we might need to go into Lily's Polka Doll to try and stall out a couple of turns here. And this matchup is very, very slow, and like I said, eventually we'll get to a point where I think we'll end up just draw passing. If we end up getting into that position, I will fast forward this footage so that you do not have to watch 20 minutes of me clicking draw pass. We'll, uh, we'll wait and see. We will wait and see. Um, potentially. We could just lose, right? We could just never draw into an Altaria, and that would be a big pain. I'm not a big fan of that, and the money is probably not a great card to see. Obviously, that won't be played this turn, because Cynthia and Caitlyn's got it out of the discard pile, but I don't want to lose my cards. Although, to be fair, if they play money more often than not, I'm happy with that, because it means that I have control of the amount of cards in people's decks, which is always very, very nice. Alright, so they've gone with their heavy impact. We are now in a position where we need Altaria, or otherwise we're going to have to sacrifice some of these Poker Dolls. Uh, if we have to sacrifice the Poker Dolls, that is fine. I don't mind that, uh, but obviously we would prefer not to, uh, just because it means that we have another way of dealing with deck out. Our opponent's got the Lily's Clefairy Doll as well, so to be honest, it probably won't matter too much. Uh, let's Bird Keeper into a second Poker Doll. We still cannot find... A Altaria, but we at least have Rosa. We have Rosa in the hand, so if they take a knockout again this turn, which they're likely to do, then we can find our double Altaria, and uh, we we probably go into draw pass mode. And I mean, we're both we've both got 31 cards in our deck, so if that is draw pass mode from there, uh, we probably fast forward it because. Watching us just click draw past for 20 minutes, like I said, is probably not enjoyable. I don't know. It could be. I'm looking at the wrong camera. You're over here now. I just looked at my... I just looked at my Logitech webcam, which is over there. Like I said before, it is over there. But you're over here now. Hopefully the, the video quality is good. I've tried to, uh, I've tried to upgrade things. I've not gone so crazy as to buy a DSLR yet, but that feels like the next step, to be brutally honest. Alright, there's that Marnie from last turn. So there goes the Rosa as the opportunity to draw into our, uh, Altarias. We haven't seen them for a while, so hopefully we come across one now, but... I'm not feeling super comfortable. And there isn't one there. We can sit there and Caitlyn, though, which is good, and grab ourselves Bird Keeper back, which is very nice. There's that heavy impact, so... I mean, now we're, we're, we're running out of time. There's only so much longer I can do this. We promote the Polka Doll, and hopefully we get one off the Cynthia Caitlyn. Let's just try it. Um, Cynthia Caitlyn, yeah. We'll grab, grab a supporter out. We don't need the Mew. We can get rid of that. Grab the Bird Keeper back, and we are looking for Altaria. And we've gotten two! Unbelievable. Okay, so... I'm feeling very, very good now. We've evolved our Altarias, we've got two Lilies Pogadol in play, and now we are in a position to just sit back and relax. I don't think that there is too much that we need to worry about from here on out. Um, before the draw passing ensues though, we might gust out the Lilies Clefairy Doll just to make it a little bit more awkward for our opponent, although to be fair I don't think it's ever going to matter. Um, just to very quickly explain what the, what the process will be from here. Um, I am planning on drawing and passing every single turn until I have about four or five cards left in my deck. Then I'm going to Bird Keeper into an APOM and I'm going to discard their entire hand. Now, that could be swift. That process could take like one, if like 30 turns, <laughs> swift 30 turns, uh, or it could take 100. It just depends on how frequently our opponent plays Marnie. Um, but eventually, we should put ourselves in a position where we go on to win this game. Um, so, we'll, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. I will continue talking for the entire time, but I can't guarantee that it's going to be interesting or relevant. Because um, it's just going to be a lot of clicking the button. I'm just going to go like this. I'm just going to go done. And then, and then it'll be the next turn. Um, again, probably could have bossed up that Lily's Clefairy Doll. Maybe I'll do that next time. Ah, it doesn't matter. That's alright. We'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, so I, I may sporadically, uh, pause the speeded, uh, the speeded, 
the sped up version of these events, uh, just to, you know, you never know, maybe I'll say something very amusing. Um, and I will, uh, I'll talk to you again when anything of interest happens in this game. Um, I'm just gonna promote the Lily's Poke Doll. We're just gonna sit back here, and we're just gonna pass. You know what? I'm gonna boss up that polka doll now. I'm, I'm bored of just click and draw parts already. Speed dive, take a knockout. Thank you very much. No prizes, but it's alright. It's not about taking prizes. This game's about endurance. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Alright, hopefully I cut myself back in here, because we are at the end of this disastrous experience. Uh, I haven't drawn into APOM yet, but I do have Pokecom and all the stuff that I need done. Um, sorry, I'm in the habit of saying that now. So, when I get to five cards remaining, I think is the time, or is it four? Done. Um, I can do four, because I can comm the Altaria in and then Bird Keeper, and I should be fine. Done. Okay. Or oh, one of the Pokemon. The hand's pretty big at this stage. Okay. It is time. Pokecom. Altaria. Apom. Into play. Beautifully done. Bird Keeper. Draw three cards, leaving one card in deck. Attach the fire energy. Yank out. Is this not the most satisfying animation in Pokemon TCG? What? Goodbye, random cards. Uh, bye bye. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm going to turn that into a clip and put it on Twitter. I love it. So now, all we need to do is play one of the four Marnies that we have remaining. Our opponent can use Lily's Poker Doll to continually stall out in the active, but eventually they will run out of ways to switch. So, as long as we can play Mahani three more times in this matchup, we should eventually win. We have 23 cards in deck. Our opponent will have, what, six, five? They can switch two more times. I'm feeling relatively confident that this game is over. It is just a matter of time whether we are forced to wait until the end of the game, until our opponent eventually decks out, or whether they can see. They just can see, and that's fair enough, I would as well. What an experience. So how good is this deck really? Well, frankly, Altaria and Kangaskhan together are a very powerful combo. Playability-wise, I'd say it's about a B. I mean, it's a really high quality deck, but playability is kind of comparing against the meta, that kind of stuff. There are decks out there that just win against Altaria. But on its day, it is an incredibly powerful deck, and it can do what it wants to do pretty much every time. Consistency-wise, this is an A-grade deck. It does pretty much everything that it wants to do all the time. It's just a matter of whether or not the deck it's playing can beat it. Value-wise, this one's super cheap. It's super, super affordable. There are no expensive cards in this deck to speak of. Altaria and Kangaskhan are all regular Pokemon cards. No Vs, no GXs. You'll be able to find them. Plus, you can play this combo into rotation because a lot of the cards in this deck stay with us. Fun-wise, I've ranked this one a B. Personally, I'm not a big fan of these type of decks. 
works, but fun is subjective. You may enjoy playing Altaria and forcing your opponent to give up wins. Overall, I'm giving this deck a B+. It is a very powerful deck that, at the right time, can definitely come up with wins on PTCGO. Back to the old camera for this one because I know that my little box fits in nicely. The OG150 challenge where Tick and Kangas Khan off of the list. It is an integral part to this deck. We didn't see it in full glory today, but when we play up against things like uh, Center Scorch and Cinderace and those kind of firebox decks that play Volcanion, it is an invaluable tool to win in those matchups. So trust me, it is definitely worth keeping in the deck. And finally, a big thank you to all of my channel members. If you'd like to become a member, there is a join button down below, which you can use to add your name to this lovely list of people. Thank you, Dadbod, Azazel, Fernando, Yolo, Stephen, Agent Abel, Austin, Josiah, Leaf, Devourer, Robsy, Caster, Biddy, Brad, Shings, Brad, Justin, and Krokutaku Gaming for your substantial support, as well as all of the people in white, the Mega Sableyes, and the regular Sableyes as well. Don't think that I've forgotten about you. Appreciate your support. Thank you for coming along. Long, and I'll see you next time for more from the Sableyes. Bye.